So I'm presenting uh, kind of on behalf of my colleague Martin Brinkling, who did most of the work on this, and he would have loved to be here, but he also loved to go on a holiday, uh, and he really needed it, so um, good for him. And uh, so I'll be presenting this, and for me, um, to be honest with you, this came a little bit early. <laughs> uh, we've got some, uh, we've uh, we've gathered great statistics, um, but I'm going to go really quick through this presentation because I'd love to pick your brains and see what el what other questions could we answer with this uh, the data that we now have. And again, we seem to. Okay, this is it. Um, so it's an. Um, this impact analysis was done by uh, by my colleague ma mainly, but it's been done uh, by a Dutch uh, collection of people, uh, experts on open data. It's called Open Culture Data, and it's a network of professionals from the cultural industries, uh, so all kinds of different backgrounds, um, and and they stimulate the the opening up of uh, cultural heritage in the Netherlands specifically, and they they, they try to make it accessible, and they, they do that in different ways. It's an initiative by, I just want to have mentioned these guys, Kenneth Lons and Ope State Foundation and Sound and Vision, where I've also previously worked and will soon be working again. Um, so um, Open Culture Data supports the cultural heritage sector. Um, they do this by uh, encouraging, um, informing about open da data policies, about uh, Creative Commons licenses, etc. cetera, um, uh, spreading knowledge about best practices, et cetera. Um, they do master classes for um, people from if, in different institutions and um, uh, have people from, for instance, from Kennesland explaining to them how, how these open data licenses work and how they can make the best use of that. Um, they also have a, um, a competition in which uh, apps are being developed, much like it's being done in Coding Da Vinci, I suppose. Um, there's an example there, but I won't go into that. just want to pick your brains, as I said. So. Um, so the big challenge of uh, measuring impact is still that um, it, it, it's very anecdotal what we can find. Very often uh, we, we lack uh, substantial data, uh, especially statistical data, and this is what we've tried to do in this uh, little um, analysis. Um, it's difficult to di differentiate if it's about open content or uh, normal or closed content for uh, institutions. There's not often a, a label, a clear label of what it, what it means if something is open or not. Um, and of course, by its very nature, open is open and therefore can be used in any uh, number of contexts um, and can be made available very widely, which makes it inherently difficult to track. Of course, it's very important to do this. This has been mentioned as well. It's to report to higher management, uh, to increase the allocation of resources, uh, but also to compare and evaluate content strategies. And on uh, Wikimania 2014, I did a brief pre presentation on that. So if you want to know more about that, check that presentation. It's in the etherpad. It might be interesting. Um, now I won't go into that too much. Um, and so on the importance of central, excuse me, there's spelling mistake, on the central da data collection, um, it, it will help Wikimedia chapters to set targets. For instance, we can have a number like 6% of all material being made available in the Netherlands right now through cultural institutions is being used in uh, Wikipedia pages, for instance. Um, a target could be to set that to 10% and see how that number can be influenced. Uh, the unique selling points of cooperation become clearer, so it's a, it's a great way to sell uh, this cooperation with Wikimedia. And uh, we can compare results so, uh, and, and filter out best practices, like what works, what doesn't work. Now, tools, there'll be no surprises here. Uh, we're still pretty much, uh, we're very grateful for these tools, Baglama and Glamorous. Hopefully, some improvements will still be made. Um, uh, I'll, we might name a few later on. Uh, so what, what data did we uh, collect? Uh, total page requests. I use the word page requests because um, I feel it's uh, the most honest word. <laughs> um, I don't know if most of you would know this, but there's also some bot visits to pages that are being counted. It's approximately 15%. It's been estimated um, on average. Uh, so, so the page views uh, reminds me to a lot of you know, human humans. I, I really hope we can at some point differentiate between human viewers and uh, bots so we could clear our data. Um, still, uh, even with 15% more or less off, it's still huge what we can do. Uh, monthly page requests, the, the number of months that we've tracked the data, number of items, distinct items used, and the times these have been used. I'll explain more later. So this is what I got. Now, I'm, as was said, a, a film theorist. I'm, I'm from the humanities, so if I see this, 
something in me wants to 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 run and hide, uh, but I didn't, and we didn't. <laughs> Um, and by the way, if I talk about reuse, um, we're talking about this kind of thing where a, a video or a, a picture is being included in a uh, page on Wikipedia, for instance, or on, uh, in a Wikidata item. Basically, any, every time a Wikimedia project uh, links back to the Wikimedia Commons item, that's being counted. So that's what we qualify as reuse. Um, when I said number of times used, that refers to um, uh, there, uh, a picture can be used in multiple articles, of course, and um, so that gives a different number than the number of items used. I hope that makes sense. Uh, we have data as far back as 2010, but obviously not for all institutions do we have that far back. Some only just recently started, a few months ago. We have data from 24 Dutch institutions, which is all of the ones that are present on Wikimedia Commons at the moment, and they have a, a total of 27 collections. And uh, these are the 27 categories that we've tracked on Wikimedia Commons. And we've started this in 24, uh, November 2014, so it's only been a few months. So it's a, a bit early to make very general claims, but uh, I, th I think it's already quite telling what we found. Um, for instance, this number, I mean, we, uh, with just the Dutch institutions, we, we have measured 1.8 billion page requests. It's, it's an incredible number. Uh, almost 60 million monthly visits, uh, I think at present we have about 2%, we, we deliver about 2% of all content that's being provided on Wikimedia Commons. If I'm not mistaken, it's about 25 million items now on Wikimedia Commons, and it's, well, this, this is 580,000 items uh, Dutch institutions make available. And of these, about 13% uh, of these items are being used. Um, and on average, if this makes any sense, on average 27% of categories is being used. So if you take uh, the, 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 um, the percentage used per category and then the average, that's 27%. So I think that's pretty successful. Um, we have some uh, museums whose content is being used up to like 50%, 60%. So but that's, those are quite unique exceptions, but overall about 27%. Um, so you, you get to generate these type of, of numbers, and this is great if you talk to a new institution and you can tell them, uh, on average, for every uh, for every item that's being uploaded to Wikimedia Commons, we get 141 page requests per month. Um, for the number of used items, so you can increase the use, we get an average of uh, over 2,000 page requests. Um, so, but then, I mean, then it becomes more complicated. We want to know more, of course. We want to. Uh, sort of uh, don't just make these general claims. Um, so you, you want to try and make a, a meaningful links between the different types of data that we have. So I would love to hear from you if you have suggestions. Um, obviously, we can just put in a graph the percentage used, then you see that uh, the National Archives, for instance, have, are very successful. Um, but um, and then, but then, interesting things are that the, there's no real surprises with the big. Uh, for the, the sort of success, most successful um, institutions. But what we did find is that, for instance, um, uh, it doesn't require a huge amount of items online to be successful at all. Um, as you can see, the Peace Palace li Library only had 100 and, or just over 100 items, uh, but they have the same amount of page requests as the Amsterdam M Museum with uh, 10 times as many pictures. Um, like, like, likewise for RCE and Tropen Museum, they have about the same amount of items. But Trope Museum seems to be a much more popular, uh, an appeal to much more popular, mo more visited pages. Um, and this is um, something that we can see in this, um, on this scale, we've sort of come up with this index of popularity, which is the number of page, page visits divided by the times that it was used. Um, and it, and that, that gives you sort of that overview of, um, it's not necessarily true uh, that the, the 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 most amount of pictures, or um, uh, yeah, that, that that means that you're most successful. Um, we can also say some things about the increase or decrease in in, in number of page views or use uh, reuse increased by 3.4 percent in just these uh, few months that we've been uh, measuring it. Um, but it would be very interesting to see that over the longer term. So we're, we're we intend to keep doing this for quite some time. Um, and some some. Uh, collections are just extremely popular where uh, individual items get used in four different articles, for instance, on average. So some items would be used maybe on 10, uh, 10 articles. So and then we can also see what the challenging um, 
collections are. Um, for instance, the um, uh, collection of the Peace Palace Library, I, I already mentioned this, but um, the, the page views that they get are predominantly on, on, on one or two of the pictures from their, uh, from their collections. Um, uh, we have another small archive, Gemeente Archief Ede, and they've, uh, for a small archive, very generously donated uh, pictures, but these pictures um, are old pictures and not so good quality pictures and all from one artist. That, um, so they, they don't illustrate an encyclopedic article very well unless it was about that particular artist. Um, and then the Collection University uh, Library of Nijmegen, they also have a collection of, uh, of old prints and that also is really struggling to pick up on uh, you know momentum and get reused. Um, so now to the more interesting part, because there's still a lot of work that we can do. I think the, this, the type of da data that we could still get, that we can already get, is the types of content, but we need to find ways to categorize that. So how do we define, um, for instance, we can define it by how old is the material, we can define it by subject matter, we need some sort of way of categorizing it. Uh, we need uh, data on the quality, large quality, small quality number of events organized to stimulate reuse. Uh, we like to get data for one country only, um, et cetera, et cetera. So this is really where uh, we would love to get some more input and we're going to spend some more time. But then the data we can't get for now is, uh, for instance, the number of human visits, like I said. Also, uh, things like uh, the, the bounce rate, how long do people spend in one page and media view statistics, and the great news is that there now is the possibility of doing some media view statistics. Uh, I put a link to uh, to a thing that uh, Heiklana created, and um, it it works. It's a bit in a hacking stage, but um, there there is definitely progress there, so that's good. Um, so thank you for your time. We'd love to hear your suggestions and questions if we have time.